The conservation of momentum is based on the Newton second law, which is the Newton second law state the chain of thread of momentum of a system is proportional to the resultant force acted on the system. The resultant force equal to mass time acceleration. The Navier-Stokes equation governs the motion of fluid and can be seen as Newton's second law of motion for fluid. In the case of compressible Newtonian fluid, this yield the formula as shown on the screen, where u is the fluid velocity, p is the fluid pressure, rho is the fluid density, and u is the fluid dynamic viscosity. The different terms correspond to the inertial forces denoted as 1, pressure forces denoted as 2, viscous forces denoted as 3, and the external forces applied to the fluid denoted as 4. The Navier-Stokes equation was derived by Navier, Poisson, saint Venon, and Stokes between 1827 and 1845. These equations are always solved together with the continuity equation as shown on the screen. The Navier-Stokes equation represents the conservation of momentum while the continuity equation represents the conservation of mass. For this assignment, we are given a situation which is for a steady internal water flow inside a circular pipe with constant diameter. Our objective is to release all the assumptions needed to reduce the Navier-Stokes equation, which is a partial differential equation, to an ordinary differential equation. Our first assumption will be, we assume that it is a steady laminar flow. For a steady laminar flow, the velocity of the fluid does not vary with time. Therefore, our dv over dt for the Navier Stokes equation is equal to zero. For the second assumption, the fluid must flow in one direction where the other two velocity component is zero. As the video shows on the screen, the velocity component for x denoted as small u is a constant, while the other component for y direction and z direction is zero. Furthermore, the velocity component for x direction is the function of y since the velocity profile changes due to the high level from the surface. We assume the flow is in of accident. That means the density is constant. Summation of derivative of u in terms of x, derivative of v in terms of y, derivative of w in terms of z equal to zero, or the product of delta and u equal to zero. For the assumption that can be made is by neglecting the body force that acted to the fluid in the system, denoted as rho g. All this assumption may be as the equation possibly in three directions, which is x, y, and z direction. In this case, we choose the x direction for the stoke equation since the fluid flow in x direction. By applying all this assumption to the Navier-Stokes equation, the Navier-Stokes equation can be reduced to ordinary differential equation. And then, the navier stokes equation can be solved by using the integration method or Laplace method. Finally, we can have the velocity component of x-direction function of y. Thanks for watching.